Hi, beautiful. Wait. Hi, how are you? Good, how are you? You look beautiful. Thank you. You do too. Thank you. I love Loving your hair. hair. I love your hair. <laughs> Say. Always so good. I always love your hair. Thank you. Thank you. So I'm so excited to am have I, Am I breaking up? No, you're am not. Am I breaking up over there? Am I okay? You're okay. Mm -hmm. I feel like I'm breaking up. Can you hear me? I'm okay. Yeah, you're good. Yeah, you kind of break you kind of breaking up a little bit, but I can hear you. Okay. Am I still breaking up? Yeah. Okay. I don't know what this the signal is always bad. Oh no. You're Not freezing okay. up. Is it Am I? Okay. Let's see. Let me check my Okay. My Wi-Fi, am I still? You're okay. Okay, you're okay. Okay. We're good? Okay. okay. Hi, Karina. We're good. How are you? <laughs> Hello. Yes. All right, you know what? Let me get another. I feel like I'm too low. Hold okay. Oh. Something to lift me up a little higher. Okay, I feel like okay. that's better. Yes. Um, and like I was saying, everything? I always love your hair. Your hair is always so good. Thank you. Thank you. I love your hair, too. I'm, like, really into big hair right now, you know? Same. Same. It's <laughs> easy, right? It's easy to do. <laughs> it's easy, and it's, and it's cute, you know? It's just, like, letting it do its thing, you know? All of that. All of that. So um, we're so excited to have you on today. Super, super excited. Super big fan of yours. Um, I just want to dive into a few hot topics before we get started. Um, it's been a week, right, since last week. So we got the news of the passing of Chadwick Bozeman, and I saw that you also paid tribute to him like so many of us did. Um, had you ever met him before? Yes. Uh-huh. Okay. Yeah, I knew him. Yeah. Yeah. And so what did that news to what did it do to you? What did his death? Um, how did it impact you, if you will? Um, it was very sad. It was, um, you know, I didn't know. I wasn't aware that he was sick. You know, right. so um, uh, yeah, it was. It was just sad. You know, it was a. Um, it was a that that hit pretty hard. You know, because he was a really good guy. You know, he mm -hmm. was. I was talking about him last night to someone and, you know, I was trying to find the the words and, you know, what everyone says about him being just like gentle, like a, just mm -hmm. a kind soul, you know, and he was that, you know, so it was, it was sad, you know, it's just always unfortunate, you know, when anyone pass, um, it's, it hurts even more when you, when you know the person and, you know, um, when you've had experiences with them where you felt like they were such a good person and you wish that their life could have been extended and seeing what he was offering um, the world, you know, we definitely need more of, of that um, embracing of each other and, you know, looking after each other and not forgetting others who are sick as well. So, you know, what he contributed, you know, um, to society and to our youth, I, I think that, you know, um, it was great. And so, you know, he will definitely be missed by, by many for sure. Definitely. And then also, um, so many people on social media were, you know, just reflecting on the fact that, like you said, nobody knew that he was even sick. And so a lot of people kind of made jokes or kind of, you know, made comments about his weight loss and what have you. Do you think that it's important for people to not judge because you never know what the other person is dealing with or what someone is dealing with on the other side? Absolutely. And that, that was like, that was one of uh, my thoughts as well is that you never know what people are going through. And I think, you know, online, it's so easy for people to hide, you know? Um, and not only that, I, it's just people can be so cruel and it's kind of like, you don't know why what people are going through. So it, it, it was a reminder for me to take that in consideration with all things. Like, 
people are carrying, you know, fighting battles that we know nothing about. And to add to that with your comment or um, I don't know why people feel like celebrities um, are just like have no feelings, you know, mm -hmm. or people that's in the limelight. It's like it's so easy for someone to comment in a very negative way like that person doesn't have feelings or that it won't affect them. You know, right. and that's really unfortunate because it's very real, you know, yeah. uh, the pain that people feel. And so I, I hope that that was at least a wake up call for those who may find themselves um, commenting in a negative way or making assumptions or judgments about someone that they don't know personally. And even if it's people that you do know, I think it's just to be, you know, mindful because we all... Um, we all have feelings and, you know, um, it, it, it has its effects, you know, whether people show it or not, some people have gotten to the point where they may ignore it. But I think that if your heart, if you love people and your whole goal, you know, a purpose is to serve and want to give life and love to people and then to have that given back to you in return, it's almost like a slap in the face, you know? It's like, I'm doing all this, I'm pushing because I want to give to you. I want to entertain, I want to teach and do all these things. And so I think that, um, I hope that, I hope that it was food for thought for people to, you know, be more considerate um, and to be slow to rush to judgment um, to people. Uh, or at least if you're thinking something, you can keep it to yourself, you know? Right, right. Um, I love that. Shh. Be quiet. Hi. <laughs> My cat. Hi. Okay, what's, her his mercy. Name? what's his name? It's a girl. Her name is Bella. I guess she wanted to be on camera. Hello. Hey, Bella. Thanks Are you going to be quiet? <laughs> okay. Spoil. Spoil. And Lord. then also, on a lighter note, Karima, you, um, did you catch Versus on Monday? Because you actually worked with Brandy, right? I did. Brandy and Monica, you did? Uh-huh. Um, I, I, I saw it. I ended up, I, I missed it when it happened, but I ended up watching it on YouTube, and I saw okay. it. Yeah. What did you think? Yeah. What did you think? I, I liked it. It really, it took me back. Uh, you know, a lot of those songs, I'm just like, wow, they don't even make music like this anymore. Uh, but it, it, it just took me back. Um, yeah, it was, not, it was very nostalgic. It was, uh, it was a real treat, you know? I, yeah. I, I love a lot of their music. I think they're so, so talented. So I enjoyed it. I like the verses that, this whole thing with verses with the artists coming together. I think that that, I don't know who came up with that, but that was a great idea. And, um, you know, a lot of times artists, like the one with like DMX and Snoop Dogg, it's like, you know, I hadn't really heard from DMX in a while but to be reminded of their music is kind of like uh, I think it's a I think it's a good thing you know for so I, many shout out to Timberland and Swiss for creating verses I mean oh they did okay that's who did it. okay okay mm -hmm. yeah. yeah because it's, it definitely brings us together right I think it brings yeah. the culture together and you know where we can just leave all of our worries behind for the moment and just enjoy yeah. each other um, and yeah. then also with Brandy and the Monica, you worked um, on Moesha. You uh, played, uh, you were on there in 2001, I believe, in the college, yeah. when they were in college, right? Um, yeah, yeah, I think I think they were in college. I don't know how old they were. Yeah, I think they were in college. Yeah. Or they had their own places or something like that. But yeah, I did. I did have an opportunity to work on that show. That was probably one of the first jobs I work on, worked on. No, that was like my second job that I booked in L.A. Yeah. So let's dive right in. Thanks for talking to us about a few hot topics there. Let's dive right into everything. So okay. you were born and raised in Chicago, right? Mm -hmm. um, daughter of mom, a daughter of two, you and your sister, I believe, right? With your mom. Yes. Is that right? Mm -hmm. um, what, interest did, what interest did you have as a child? Like, what were you into? Entertaining. Mm -hmm. Funny enough, I used to sing a lot when I was a kid. My mom, they thought I was going to be a singer. And I, I don't know. I it just, uh, I phased out of that. But I, I just loved, um, as a child, I loved to entertain mm -hmm. for sure. Um, my aunt had a camcorder back then. And I have videos of when I was like 
probably since the age of 10, maybe even younger, of just mm -hmm. performing and doing skits and stuff like that. Um, I think I was very creative, you know, as a, as a child um, and athletic. I was in a lot of sports. I was a gymnast. I played basketball. I was like point guard for a basketball team. I was on a volleyball team. So uh, my mom kept me in sports. I danced too. So I was very active, you know, mm -hmm. as, a, as a child. And I, I enjoyed sports as well. And when did you develop an interest or, you know, gravitate toward the arts and acting? When did you say, okay, I think this is something that I want to, you know, peek into a little bit? Because, you know, I was always into it, but it's funny because I did it, but for some reason in my little brain when I was a kid, I didn't connect the dots of like, you can do this for a living. You know, I really <laughs> just remember growing up watching people like Whoopi Goldberg. She had, um, I mean, I loved all her movies from like Burglar, Jumping Jack Flash, The Color Purple, Fatal Beauty. And I remember watching these movies and being like, wow, you know, like just so just taken out of my own reality and right. wanting to, to do that. Um, mm -hmm. It wasn't until like high school, you know, uh, where I realized, well, after high school, well, before I was leaving high school, where I realized that I wanted to pursue it professionally, where I realized that I could pursue it professionally as a as a career, like I could actually do it for a living. So um, I've always been drawn to it, but connecting the dots as to is something that I could do for a living didn't happen until like late high school. And you spoke a lot about Whoopi Goldberg being an inspiration to you and how she was, um, you saw yourself represented watching her on screen. Um, yeah. Now you're a representation for Black girls and Black women to see themselves and, you know, they have the opportunity to dream because of you. What advice would you share with Black girls and Black women that are wanting to break into this industry? I would say yes, it's possible, you know, and to believe and yourself and believe that it's possible. You have so many um, examples that, you know, we're like testimonies that, you know, your dreams are, are, are possible. And I would say go for it, you know, um, ask questions and move forward the best way that you know how, you know, um, I always put God at the head of my, of my life. And so I feel like, and I trust my instincts, you know, for the most part. <laughs> And uh, I think that that has been a, a great guide for me on my journey. But for for all artists out there, young women, I definitely say that, you know, I'm a living witness um, and an example that is possible. If it can happen for me, it can happen for you. Yes, I love that. And then you get your big I break. I believe that. Yes, mm -hmm. I believe it too. And thank you for being a representation for us because we see you and we, like I said, black women and girls, even if they don't want to be actresses, you know, we see you on screen and we, you know, dream bigger, yeah. you know, because we see somebody yeah. like yourself. So thank you for that. Um, your wow. big break came and saved the last dance. And is it true that mm -hmm. you guys shot that in uh, Chicago, where you're from? We shot that in Chicago. Yes. Uh huh. It's yeah. Awesome. Save the last dance. That was my first job. Talk Professional to us about job what that film that was your first job what did that film do for your career because you then went on to appear in a variety of film and tv projects since then yeah. what did that do for you it it, it gave me enough money <laughs> um <laughs> it's funny because i crashed that audition for save the last dance i didn't have an appointment but i found out about it and i just showed up to the audition and, um, you know, that was me just stepping out of, out on faith and just going for it and, um, you know, um, apologizing later. You know, it was just kind of like I, I had my goals. I knew what I wanted to do. So booking that job, you know, I had one line in that movie, but I made enough money to officially move to L.A. So that was kind of like, um, again, it's like, you know, putting your mind, setting your mind to achieve something, it's almost like, I don't believe in coincidences. I feel like things are coming together to uh, guide you in the direction towards the, the path of where you're setting out to, um, to go in line. And I feel like LA was one of the things that I, one of the places that I knew that I needed to move to in order to um 
work in television and film, Chicago wasn't really a big market in that regards. And so, you know, LA, moving to LA was on my list of goals. And so I feel like booking Save the Last Dance, it definitely gave me enough money to officially move to, to LA. And I got my, um, I was tapped Hartley, which means I qualified to join the union from that film. Talk about ballsy, right? Most people would not want to crash an audition. They would be like, okay, if I'm not on the list. I'm not going. Speak to us really quick if you can, Karima, or not even really quick. It's not on my notes. But I want you to speak to that, of taking that risk, stepping out on faith, stepping out of your mm -hmm. comfort zone. If you get a no, you get a no. But at least you know that you did what you had to do to get what it was that you were trying to get. Speak to us about being ballsy and taking the risk. I think you absolutely have to go for it, you know, and, and, and if you, if you're feeling afraid, you, you have to ask yourself, why not? You know, what's the worst that could happen? You know, um, you could book the job or you could, you know, obtain the opportunity or things can move to the next level. And you know, nothing happens and you look back like, well, what if you don't want to have the what ifs? Cause you have nothing to lose at this point, you know? So I feel like um, if you don't try, then, you know, you'll, you'll never know. So I think that um, that's crucial of just stepping out and just doing it, you know? And then you've gone on to appear in Girlfriends, Shameless, mm -hmm. ER, Bolden, Suburbicon, which I loved you in, American Violet, <laughs> a host of other projects and next month you have a new film coming out after we collided can you talk to us a little bit about what we can expect from that film and i know it came out on the in the uk right like recently yeah. is that right okay yes yes um you know it's it's a uh, it's based off of a series of books uh mm -hmm. called it's a, the after series uh, written mm -hmm. by this young lady named anna todd and it's really kind of like a, a love story, a youth love story. And so mm -hmm. After We Collided is the second installment of the books. Uh, okay. There's the, the first one is entitled After. And um, I think that's on Netflix right now. But, you know, I, I, you know when I saw it, funny enough, I was like, you know, I, I love love stories. And I... Um, Me too. <laughs> and so I, like, cried. It was like, oh, my God. I know it's like a teen drama, but, you know... Um, <laughs> I was in it, you know, I was, I was really into it. So I think people are going to enjoy it. I haven't actually seen, you know, the, um, the finished product of After We Collided, the one that uh, is releasing in the United States uh, October 2nd. But um, mm -hmm. I've been hearing, you know, good things in, in the script and in the, in the books are good. So, yeah, I feel like well, it's we good. It's just, we're, we're following this, we're following the journey of two people that are in love and there are, hills and, and, and valleys you know oh as love is <laughs> hills and valleys <laughs> um as yeah, love right. is okay. right and you have like the team the young love is even more well i can't even say love young love is even more because you know we get it at all age ranges you know where it's you know trying to understand what it is and what it isn't if it's gonna right. be or if it's not gonna be you know <laughs> So, yeah, yeah, definitely. And so when can we see it? Will it be in theaters or will it be on demand? Uh, both, I believe. Okay. I mean, I think a lot of things would be contingent on COVID as far as right. in the theaters. Because I was actually surprised to hear that it was going to be in the theaters in the UK. I was like, okay, well, they must have, you know, progressed and had some things yeah. in place where to make that possible. So I don't as far as I know right now in the U.S., no theaters are open yet, but maybe in October we would have something in place that would make it possible. So as far as I know, yes, both in theaters and um, video on demand, but if the theaters are closed, it definitely will be just um, VOD. Well, we'll be supporting you, my dear. So we Thank can't you. wait for that to come out. Yes. And then we also support you in our favorite show. All the people are in the comments. When is season three coming? When is season three coming? All American, Grace James, yes. we love you in this role. Um, Karima, talk Thank to you. us about how you came to be involved in this project based on former NFL player Spencer Pacinger, 
Um, you play his mom mm -hmm. in the show. Um, and it's just such a beautiful show, beautifully written, beautifully acted. You guys, a beautiful cast. How did you get involved in this project? Uh, I had an audition for it. Um, mm -hmm. It was pilot season, and pilot season is um, uh, a time in the industry where shows that have been picked up by networks or the uh, network has expressed interest in this particular show, uh, they're mm -hmm. going to cast for, they're looking for actors to play the roles in the pilot. The pilot is like the first episode of a show. Mm -hmm. And so um, during pilot season, all the shows are doing this. So you're running around town, you're auditioning for all these different shows. Um, mm -hmm. And I had an audition for it. And so I, I auditioned several times. And then um, I eventually book, booked the role. <laughs> you play a mom of two. But you know what's so <laughs> interesting? Huh? Go ahead. Go ahead. What were you saying? Oh. I was going to say, what's so interesting about uh, that show or that moment, that time in my life was that I was, um, I was auditioning a lot and I was tired. I remember just being like, I remember sitting in my car and I got to the audition early and I remember sitting in my car like, man, Lord, I'm tired, you know, because it was like. I mean, I've been here, I've been in LA now officially like 20 years. So, you know, booking a series, being on a, a great uh, drama series was on my goal list, like eight in Chicago, you know what I'm saying? When I lived in Chicago, so it was like, you know, as an actor, you have all these things that you want to do. And so, you know, being a series regular, working consistently is something that was like just on the list a long time ago. So. I, I remember sitting in my car just being like, you know, after running around all these auditions, I'm just like, man, I'm tired, you know? And I remember just, I think a part of me was just kind of like letting go, not in a sense of like, I'm leaving the industry, but just like, I'm going to go in here and whatever happens, happen. You know, it was just like, it was that type of tired where it was like, even though I love the project and usually when, I read something and I'm super excited about it. It's like, mm -hmm. okay, I'm gotta, you know, I gotta go in, you know, it's, it's a whole nother, like, you know, deep meditation, you know, it's all this stuff to try to stay grounded and ready. And, um, you know, with this one, I was just like, I knew, I knew it. I, I, I love it now, but I remember just being like, it's going to be what it's going to be, you know? And, right. and, and it's funny that, you know, uh, it's a funny and a blessing that, you know, I, I, I booked it. But mm -hmm. I, I just remember that moment of sitting in my car, just being like, yo, I'm, I'm tired, you know? Uh, just the whole running around town and, you know, all of that. But that's that's a part of, you know, that comes with it, you know? But you do have those moments of being like, you know? That's a word. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> because there's some people that are watching, I've been there recently, like, uh -huh. that are tired. And you're yeah. like, okay, when is this going to connect? What's yeah. going on here? You know, and yeah. so thank you for sharing that transparency because um, you didn't give up and you still went and then look what, you know, you got the job. Yeah. Um, but you yeah, gotta keep pushing. you feel just exhausted. And what got yeah. you through that exhaustion and, you know, being tired? What pulled you through to say, okay, I got to just keep going? What pulled you through? I think uh, I, I knew that this was something that I wanted to do. So it was just kind of like, like you said, you are going to get tired. You have moments of feeling tired. But if you know that this is your ultimate goal, I mean, being tired doesn't mean giving up. It just, it's a, it's a recognition that you're tired and you would like for this thing to move a little <laughs> differently. You know what I mean? But it doesn't mean like, I'm going to give up. It's just like, man, I'm tired. And, you know, to acknowledge that is, is real. I don't think anything is wrong with it, but... Um, it's just an acknowledgement, but right. if you know that this is your ultimate goal or what you're trying to do, it doesn't mean it's time to walk away. It just means that you're tired. Right. <laughs> Basically, so just you know what I mean? Okay, <laughs> you're tired and what? Okay, keep moving. You know what I'm saying? So yeah. uh, that, that's all it is. That's all it is, you know? <laughs> you can take I a little break it. if you want to. You want to sit down for a week or so, but you're going right. to, you know, 
the dream is real. The dream is still alive, you know? So you still keep moving towards that in that direction. But, you know, it's it's normal to feel, you know, to feel tired, you know? But that doesn't mean, tired doesn't mean no. Tired doesn't mean that it's not going to happen. It just means it's not happening in the time that you want it to happen. Mm. You just preached to us. Thank you for that <laughs> sermon on this time. We needed that. And so you guys are gearing up for season three. Have you guys started shooting? Because you were supposed to come back next month in October, but it's yeah. been pushed to 2021. What can you tell us about? Are you guys in the middle of shooting? Do you know anything you can tell us? Share yeah, no, us? We, we, no, we haven't started filming yet. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, okay. but we'll be film. We'll be filming this fall, but we haven't started yet. Yeah. Okay, yeah. what? Why do you think this show connects so much with viewers? Why do you think it connects with the children and the adults? Why does it connect with all races? Why do you think people gravitate to this show so much? Because it's real. It's very relatable. You know, I think mm -hmm. that people watching it, either you, you can see yourself in one of the the characters. So I feel like they really cover. Uh, a wide spectrum of um, not even personalities, but life circumstances and the hearts, you know, things that people are dealing with heart wise, right. you know, and um, that's a big connector piece. And then also, I think that, you know, how it was composed in the sense of you have these two worlds where ideally we think that they are extremely different, you know, like mm -hmm. Beverly Hills. And Crenshaw is like right. you, you even say the just those names, you know those 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 words. It's like immediately you have a visual of two different, two totally different worlds. Yeah. And I think that you know people could appreciate that. You know, well, I can see that we are more alike than we are different. You know, we have people in Beverly Hills dealing with the same thing that people in Crenshaw are dealing with on a human level, on a heart level. And so I right. think that that's uh, another thing that um, people can appreciate about the show because it's like um, really recognizing that how universal um, issues are, you know? Um, yeah, universal life issues are, and it goes beyond race, class, um, communities that you live right. in regardless. So I, I, I think that, and then, you know, um, yeah, and cool storylines, you know, kids get yes. the storyline, kids love the storylines and, you know, the actors, so I think it's a, a number of things in the writing, so it's, it's just, yeah, so I think that it's a, it's a lot of uh, cool uh, uh, stuff and just fresh, you know, it's, it's a, I feel like it's fresh, you it know, is. it's a fresh show, you know. Very fresh, very mm -hmm. fresh. And you play a mom of two boys, right, a single yeah. mom of two boys. Did mm -hmm. you pull from your childhood growing up in Chicago for this part? Did you like go back to them when you were a child growing up? You know what? I, I didn't at first. It's funny because someone else asked me that. And I said, well, you know what? My mom, so I grew up in a uh, single family home too. Mm -hmm. And I guess there was some part of me that could understand it. It helped me understand it more, uh, the reality of it, because I grew up in the situation so, uh, but I don't know how much I really leaned on it, but mm -hmm. it definitely helped me understand um, certain aspects that comes with that, you know? Right. And so I was able to um, um, transfer uh, that reality, you know, mm -hmm. to, to myself to make that real for me. Have you had... On, on, the, on the mother side, on the mother right. side. Right, mm -hmm. right, right. Have you had single moms reach out to you and say, thank you for representing us the way you do? And thank you for what you're doing just to be an inspiration for us. I have, I have, which is really like, wow. It's like, um, it's humbling, but it's just like, you know, it's um, when you just, when you have anybody as, as an artist, when you ever have, when you have anyone ever saying anything about how your uh, art has touched them or, you know, help them with their relationship with their kids. It's very humbling, you know. Um, but I was just I was surprised, you know. I, this is my first time in this type of, you know, position with playing a character consistently. And uh, but I have to thank the writers for, 
you know, creating these worlds and um, for us actors to bring to life. But it's definitely humbling. It's surprising. And um, it's surprising to be on the receiving end of something like that. And then um, it's very humbling, too. Yes. Did you talk to Spencer's mom at any point after you got the role, like, just to see how she was? Or was it... Because it's loosely based on his story, right? It's not, like... Mm -hmm. So it's inspired. Mm -hmm. It's inspired by yeah. Yeah, I did. I did. Okay. I did talk to this mom. Yeah, sweetheart. Oh, yes. she? oh, she's sweet. She's sweet. She's sweet. She's strong. You know. Yeah. Yes, I <laughs> yeah. I like. I like her. I like her a lot. Yeah. She did. She did a great job with us, with uh, Spencer and her boys, just in general. You know, um, she should be very, very proud of um, what he's accomplished and. Yeah. So yeah, she's she. She's cool as heck. Yeah, definitely. And I'm sure she's proud of what you're doing on screen. I sure. hope so. I mean, because I'm not like, you know, I, I know, well, we know it's inspired by, so mm -hmm. I really tried to, because at first I was thinking about how do I approach this? Like, do I try to become the mom, you know, his mom? Right. But then I, I, I realized that no, you know, that's not it. Um, but it was good to, to, to talk to her um, and stuff like that. So I, I hope that she's, you know, uh, proud of, uh, the work and um, how I'm, you know, telling the story as as a character. Even though I'm not trying to be her, I hope that right. she's just happy um, with how everything is has turned out overall. You know, what would you like to see happen next season with Grace's storyline? What What would you like to see? Because we saw everything that unfolded in season two, right? Uh -huh. um, where do you Where do you want to see her go next? What do you want to see happen for her? I would like for Grace to have a life, you know, like, uh, <laughs> I mean, you know, it's hard. I feel like you, you just don't have space for it almost. You got, you working full time, then you have kids that you raising. It's all, it's like, and then I'm in school. So it's very little wiggle room, you know, to do a whole lot. So I would like for Grace to have some fun, you know, it's like her life, everything right now is about her boys, you know, yes. keeping them together, getting them through school, you know, raising them to be responsible young black men, you right. know, um, and that's my focus, you know, but I would like for her to have a little fun too, you know, Thank a little, a little, a little, that little bit, you know, maybe some workout. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know what's going to happen with her. Micah, I just, I don't, you know, some the sister that been through some things, you know. She like a husband yeah. done left, you know. Don't know it. The husband done passed away. The she didn't have. It's, it's been a lot. Oh, what yeah. was your favorite episode from season two? Everybody always asks me that. It, <laughs> unfortunately, this sounds horrible, but my favorite episode was the episode when Corey died. You know, mine uh, too. It was very yeah. emotional. Yeah, yeah. Um, I just like the whole, I'm all about family. So I, I, I love the, that, um, the aspect of us being able to have an episode where we were all together, you know, right. Right. even though it was for the last time, I really, you know, appreciated that. And then I also appreciated, you know, us finally, um, saying all the things that we didn't get a chance to say. Right. for myself and for for Billy's character. So I I like the um the um the back the back and forth they have between us. I like how that was done. Um gosh, what is the director's name? I can't believe I'm blanking on um Ah, uh, you're going to kill me. Great director for that episode. I'm It's okay. Jesus, how am I forgetting his name? Anybody in the comments? Nobody. <laughs> it's okay. It's okay. And you know, oh, another yeah. episode I liked was the class reunion episode. That was fun. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that was fun, too. That. Yeah. that was fun. Yeah. I, like, I like to see you in that space. You know what I mean? Yeah. I like to see you in that. That's why I, I would like you to have a little bit more fun, too. See yeah. Three? Yeah, was like, yeah. Have yeah, a little yeah, bit more <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Exactly. So we'll uh, see. Yeah. 
Uh, what do you uh -huh. think about, so the series now streams on Netflix, right? And you guys mm -hmm. have a whole other audience of people that probably hadn't watched you guys on the CW, but now they can binge and stream you guys on Netflix. Um, yeah. What do you, what does that mean? Or what did, what do you, what does that mean to have another audience of people watching the show? Have you gotten people to say, well, I didn't get to see you guys on CW, but now I've watched you guys on Netflix. All what the time. response? Mm -hmm. all, yeah, all the time. I hear that all the time. I think it's great. I think it's a beautiful thing, you know? Right. Um, I think it's an important show. You know, I I get, you know, uh, emails, not emails, but DMs a lot from kids saying how yes. this show has changed their lives, how they think differently, how they want to be like Spencer, you wow. know? Um, so I love that, you know? I love that, you know... Um, the uh, the show really feeds the kids in a way, offer food for thought, where it's like they they get it just from watching the storylines. It's not even like no one's telling them like this is what this means and you gotta right. do this. It's like they're just catching it from watching the story play out and like oh okay, so it's offering different perspectives that are uh, strong and things that they can carry with them in their lives. So I really love that aspect of it. So yeah, I think it's great that it's being, um, Netflix is actually open, opening up the, the audience or exposing the show to, to more people. Um, because I, I think that now, not only is it entertaining, but it's offering, you know, different perspectives to our youth that may not have had those perspectives in the prior Definitely. to. Definitely. Mm -hmm. And those who have not can catch up on seasons one and two on Netflix. So yes. go ahead and stream, stream, stream. Um, and so do you have a date uh, for season three? Is there a date, a specific date we can look out for for when season three comes back? I don't, I don't want to, um, as January, it's in January. As far okay. as I know, as of now, it's in January, but I don't have it. I've seen two different things. I don't know which, I'm sorry, I keep looking. There's like a butterfly outside my window. Um, oh. yeah, I've, I've seen two different, um, two different dates. I've seen January 4th, and then I saw something that said January 28th. Okay. So uh, don't quote me, but I think, it, I'll just say it's in January of 2021. January. So we'll be mm -hmm. watching. Okay, the directors, the director was Benny, uh, Benny Bull. Benny Bull! Oh! Yeah. <laughs> yes. That's it. Thank you. Shout out to omb.trav. Shout out. Thank you for that. I was up. I was up. Yes. Thank you. Whoever said that. Thank you. I was up really yeah. late last night and um, my brain is like <laughs> almost there, but I just, I can't believe it. Yes. Benny Boom. Yeah. So, he did a great yeah. job on that uh, episode. So, um, yeah. And do you guys get to offer any insight on your characters, even though I know that it's um, inspired by a Spencer story, but do you guys get to say, well, maybe she wouldn't do this, maybe she would do that, or do you guys get to offer perspective on any of your storylines? Um, I, I don't know. I've never, I, I never have. Um, I don't mm -hmm. know if other actors do. Um, I'm sure, you know, the, the writers are definitely, um, or are a showrunner, um, definitely open to have conversations about your character. And I'm right. sure they seem so open to, you know, hear what you have to say. So if you had any input, I can't see them being like, well, no, that's not what we did. You know, that's not what we're doing. Right. I mean, maybe, but I don't, I don't think so. But I honestly don't personally know because I've never... Uh, gone in and said, well, you know what? I think that um, <laughs> she's gracious. She you know what I gracious. think? I think, you know, I've never, right. I've never done it, so. <laughs> okay. Okay. Yeah. And Karima, you're not only, so we'll be looking out for All American in January, you guys, because people were, like, missing it. They were like, okay, when is it coming back? So January 2021. So yes. we'll be looking out for it. Um, but you're not only an actor, you're also a writer and producer. Um, yeah. What do you love to do most? Do you like to be in front of the camera or behind, or you don't have a specific favorite? You like to do both of them. I like to do both. You know, they, mm -hmm. they stimulate different parts of my, my brain. So right. producing is like my love for puzzles. You know, uh, mm -hmm. I like putting things together. 
So right. they just stimulate me um, mentally in in uh, in different ways, you know. So they right. just stimulate me differently. So I like I love them both. What kind of stories do you want to tell next? Like, what do you want to? What's on your What's in your mind of stories that you want to put out next? Not only entertaining, but thought provoking, like food for mm -hmm. thought, you know, um, uh, just things that humanity, uh, I don't always say humanity, that's too broad. And I, I don't know, I haven't even brought it down to specific words like, oh, this is just specifically women issues. I want to deal with women issues. Like a, a film that I just, well, we haven't shot it yet, but I wrote it, co wrote it, and uh, we're in like, uh, phases of putting elements together for it. Now that is a more female driven storyline, but um, I don't want to like pigeonhole myself and say, I'm only going to do this certain type of thing. But for the most part, I do want to do things that's thought provoking because I feel like uh, television and film is such a huge medium to communicate to people. And I feel like if you do have the voice or if you have a voice that can offer something in the sense of helping people, healing, um, just, you know, um, presenting something to someone's life that could be helpful. I'd rather lean in that direction um, versus just making anything because right. I feel like it's, it's just such a, uh, a once in a lifetime opportunity to be able to feed people in the way that could be life changing. So I want to take the opportunities that I do get to be able to uh, offer some real, what I consider maybe, you know, real food for thought that um, may, you know, offer different perspectives that could make someone's life a little easier. Right. Or like just how they're looking at it, you know, just offer different perspectives that might be um, healthier. I don't know. I love that. Mm -hmm. um, there has been this upheaval, if you will, in Hollywood um, mm -hmm. with networks speaking out and against racism. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> have you ever, in your 20 plus years being here in LA working, have you ever experienced racism on a set? I don't think so. Mm -hmm. okay. I don't think so. Yeah, I don't. I don't think so. You know, the the journey has been long. It has not been easy. It has not been hard. It's just been a process. Right. You know, um, I have not had uh, a lot of bad situations, work situations, mm -hmm. where it's like. And I, I guess I feel, I'm fortunate to, I feel, I guess I should say, I don't know if I'm fortunate to have that, that, that has been my experience, but I haven't had a lot of, you know, uh, racism in your face or anything like mm -hmm. that. Now, if it was something behind my back, you know, I, I don't know. But as far as going to set and feeling uncomfortable and people weird, like, you know, most creative people are very uh for the most part a lot of them are very empathetic you know mm -hmm. and are open vessels you know um as creative so a lot of times those rooms don't really hold that space i mean collectively as artists you know we're like we're all about humanity we're all trying to reflect humanity you know so mm -hmm. um i i feel like it could i don't know it could get in the way of your your gift to just have that there it's almost serves as a block you know right. um then you become a character yourself you know it's like oh you're the racist neighbor you know um right <laughs> you know right. uh because it affects how you you deal with people how you you know operate with um, folks but i have to say i have not i have not experienced that on set do you think that there should be change made in hollywood as it relates to how they handle their black 
actors, people in front of the camera, people behind the camera. Do you think that a change should happen? Um, you know what? Honestly, I feel like I have seen a big shift. You know, from mm -hmm. the time that I've started in this industry, mm -hmm. from the time I've moved to Hollywood to now, I can say I feel like there has been a lot of changes, you know, from my right. from start, from in front of the camera to behind the camera. I mean, when I first started, uh, there was no black female leads on a TV series. You know, I think the, the last one was uh, Diane Carroll, maybe in Julia. Mm -hmm. That was like 1970-something, I think. So... Now we had Kerry Washington, Viola right. Davis, Nicole uh, Bahari. We had, mm -hmm. I mean, on every single network, you know, right over the last. So that's progress. So I see the progression. So I know that there are a lot of things that um, people still want to continue to push the envelope on, but I feel like it's happening, you know, and it, it, mm -hmm. it's been happening. So I can't say that. Um, I don't really know what to speak to in regards to to um, in regards to that because I feel like I'm seeing a lot of changes, you yeah. know. Um, yeah, I mean, yeah, and there's yeah, so many no. different there's so many different networks right now. There's so many different distribution avenues. I mean. I feel like we doing it right now. I mean, I feel right. like it's going to continue to grow, but it's like, right. I see the elevation. I see right. the doors opening. So I, it's happening. I, you know, I don't really know what else to say, what else needs to happen. I mean, I don't know if we need more black execs. I don't really know that side of it as mm -hmm. much on the executive mm -hmm. levels of what they deal with over there on that side. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. But as an actor, I feel like when I watch TV or or even just look at award shows um, and see how many of us are out here working and, you know, creating, writing and stuff like that, it feels like progress to me. And it feels like it's not going to stop. So I feel like we are moving in um, a, a really good direction in, in that regards. Uh, but again, as far as like on the executive level, I can't really speak to that um, because I don't know. You know, right. I don't know what they 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 actually deal with that needs to be changed in Hollywood. Right. So yeah. And then so we have an election coming up. Mm -hmm. Two months, I think sixty something days, or maybe I think we're like fifty nine, fifty eight days. Um, why is it important for people to get out and vote in this election? Um, it's important for people to vote, um, because, oh, I was hoping politics didn't come up. It's important for people to get out and vote because you are, um, taking actions to, um, you're, you're allowing your, your voice it's, it's almost as if you are allowing your voice to be heard, um, the different um, policies and the things that you would like to see implemented or done. You going to the polls and voting is you using your voice or your thoughts to say, I'm choosing this. And collectively, if it's enough people who feel the same way, then perhaps changes could take place. I love it. That wasn't so bad. Yeah. <laughs> I love <Yes>. it. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. So if no one's doing that, then, you know, you know, I don't know. So, but that, I mean, I think that's, that's, um, that's a good way to like really kind of look at it. Like, you know, but you got to research. I feel like, it can't be Say that again. Say you gotta again. research. It can't be what everybody uh, what everybody's saying. You have to really kind of like do your homework and really be make your own decisions as far as uh, what makes sense and what doesn't make sense. Mm -hmm. um, 
And I think that that's important because I never really did that. I always listened to what everybody else said because either one, I waited last minute, you know, and it was like, oh, I got to vote tomorrow. You know what I mean? I don't know what anybody's policies are. Like, okay, let me just vote for wh whoever's everybody's saying to vote for, you know? And um, I'm never going to do that again, you know? On a right. local level, I mean, especially on the, I mean, you don't hear, it's not so much on the local level, but you really hear it when it comes to the presidential election. So right. I just think it's important for people to, to really, um, to research, you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah. research and, and really research. know what, what's going on yeah so mm -hmm. you guys you heard the queen research and get out and vote make sure you vote research research policies for yourself and vote based on vote off vote on your values you know vote based off of what you would really like to see happen right. You know, Ice Cube, um, he drafted like a, a plan for Black America. I have to um, finish reading through it, but I'm, I'm, I love how he is very engaged in the, in, the, in the process of it. it. Has really started to cause people to at least hopefully look at it like, oh, it's not just about, you know, whatever I could get. You know, it's really about also making demands and it's like earning my vote. You know, you just don't get it. It ain't just about if you don't vote for me, you ain't, you know. Right. You know, it's like really putting things on a on the on the table and, and asking for things and you know, seeing if you could if those things could could happen. So um I'm learning more, you know, uh, about it, but I'm not a big fan of, of politics at all. Neither am I. We gonna have to do something come October, come November. I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah. We you definitely gotta do yeah. something, but it's it's yeah. over. It's overwhelming, you know. I think for for anybody, you know, yeah. we're in a really difficult position right now. Um, I think we're in a really difficult position right now as a as a nation because mm -hmm. there's just so much corruption going on, and um, unspoken. I mean, you know, what are you gonna do? Get out and vote. Get out and get vote. Out and vote. Get, out and vote. get out and you vote. You heard it, Grace James. Get out and vote, you guys. Get out and vote, you guys. So, Karima, how are you doing self-care with the lockdown? Well, people are, we're starting to get back out in LA a little bit more, but how yeah. have you, for the past six months, how have you practiced self-care for yourself? How have you taken time for you? Um, well, it's kind of been off and on. You know, I have moments of, like, really being in the zone with some things, you know, like, I mean, this is more like just surface stuff, but um, deep conditioning might like have every Sunday, wash my hair, deep condition, you know, I might do my nails, I might do my feet, just make it, I mean, even though I'm in a house, but it's like, that's a little stuff right. like that. Um, you need some rest because I can tend to be a night owl. So it's like self-care starts to look like when I go to bed early, you know, and then right. wake up, even though I have nowhere to go. It's mm -hmm. like, you know, going to bed early, you know, getting up at a, at a, at a decent time. And then um, also uh, educating myself on things, learning, you know, new things. And really a lot of um, just going within and uh, reflecting over a number of situations and really trying to grow, you know, as a person. I feel like this, uh, um, without the distractions, you really get a chance to um, see yourself a little mm -hmm. clearly. And I think that this opportunity, this moment at home has given me an opportunity to really go deeper and um, 
uncover a lot of stuff because even before before the lockdown I, I mean I've always gone to, to therapy on and off throughout mm -hmm. the years and mm -hmm. so a lot of the things I think I ended my therapy um, sessions like earlier this year but a lot of the things I had kind of learned over the years I started to really kind of look at it and you know um, going deeper and seeing like oh okay uh, that so a lot of inner work, you know, so I, I'm, I'm happy about that because I could, I feel like I could tell that there's been growth, you know, because yes. it's mm -hmm. like just things happen. It's like, oh, like two years ago or 10 years ago, <laughs> I would have, you know, whatever, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, so you can mm -hmm. start catching yourself like, wow, I just didn't, I responded completely different. You know, you peel <laughs> from things. So this has been a good time for that because um there hasn't been any distractions to kind of keep you keeping you away from yourself i mean right. you could create the distractions but this mm -hmm. is a really good time um to kind of go go within and really kind of reflect on um all those things that you ran away from or didn't allow right. yourself to do before in the past um for whatever reason so right. I'm, I'm, I'm a big thing that I really enjoy is like self help stuff, and um, so I'm always trying to grow. Yes, yes, mm -hmm. I love that. I love this interview. This was so good. Thank, yeah, thank you for you. taking time for us today. But before you go, I want to uh -huh. do five questions in five seconds. It's my um, Ashley's five and five, so it's a, like okay. a little rapid fire. Okay. Uh, favorite movie. Color purple. I love it. Uh, what did you have for breakfast? Today? Yeah, today. Friday. Oh, I haven't had breakfast yet. What time is it? Two o'clock? Okay. So I was, uh, let me, let me explain. Let me explain. I was okay. up really late and I woke up today at like, I think 11 something. And I started getting ready for for this so mm -hmm. i got ready at 11 too that's what but you know what <laughs> but you know what that's 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 actually so my whole diet thing is something i know i need to look at as far as like self-care because stuff like this happens you know and it's like mm -hmm. um oh it's two o'clock i haven't eaten yet and it's not that i don't want to eat it's just that i've just been moving and doing all this stuff and then i was like oh i gotta get double line i want to like so that's something that I definitely need to um, understand that that's a part of self care as well, and I do understand yeah. that, and I feel like I feel like I'm like, um, I don't know, like I just put myself out there, and I'm like, I don't want people to think I don't be eating because I do eat. No, I just, I it's just like, same way. and your body is way more balanced than mine. Yeah, I'm the same way. I don't eat breakfast. I don't know why, but I'm yeah. I'm healthy. I just don't. I'm not yeah. a breakfast girl, but it's okay. Okay, it's okay. Yeah, summer or fall? <laughs> summer or fall? <laughs> Which do you prefer, summer or fall? Fall. Okay. Fall. Um, what would you be doing if you weren't acting? Producing. I think we have one more favorite lyrics to a song. I can't see. Uh, <laughs> damn. No, no. It, they're, it, they read it. They read it X. Oh, you know okay, what? okay. Yeah. Um, what, who is it by? Lil' Kim. Oh, Lil' Kim. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know why that came to my head. I'm sure there's so many other lyrics that um, are like my favorite lyrics, but I think when I was younger and like, a, you know, fast, I knew all of Lil' Kim songs. You know what Me I mean? Me too. <laughs> and was singing, rapping them. Like, yeah, you know, but I, I think she was like, she was young, black, colorful hair, rapping about stuff you would never say, you know? So it was a little bit like a, a little bit of like, you know, uh, you shouldn't be doing it, but, but you know, you're doing it and you yeah, but you're doing it. it. Yep, yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's funny. Um, wow, yeah. But I'm sure there's other lyrics. I just said that because that was the first that came to my mind because I probably know all of her songs. 
but um but yeah but i i definitely couldn't say those no, words well we, yeah. we have a visual we have a visual yeah we know. we know we <laughs> know this was we know this was so good thank you for taking time i appreciate you thank you so so much and we'll be You're watching welcome. the movie next month. Um, we'll be watching it uh, uh, on on demand or in theaters. You just have to let us after know. we so collide it. it. Okay. Okay. And when you post it, we'll be we'll be following. Thank you so much. Okay. We will. I have to say that. I, okay. Uh, uh, well, I can't say anything. But just know that there is two more movies um, that's coming with after. There's after uh, three. Uh, books three and four are going to be produced as well. So oh, I, you know, okay. want to tell people if they want, if you guys want to read the book series, the book is available to be read as well. And I, I portray the character Karen Scott. Karen, yes, they've been in the comments. They, Karen and Grace. <laughs> Karen and Grace. Yay! Yeah, the, yes. our fans are just beautiful. You know, and I, I really am thankful for them and. I hope everybody is doing well, you know, during these times and, you know, just, just hold on. We're going to get through this. You know, it's been a, it's been a long time, but we're still here. And uh, I just want to thank you and, you know, thank the fans for all of your support. Like, you know, it, it means a lot. And um, I just want to wish, you know, everyone all the best, you know, during this time and just, you know, encourage you guys to, um, Remember the brighter side of things and know that, you know, uh, we'll get through this. This too shall pass, you know. Amen. This too Amen. shall pass. I love it. Yes. Thank you so much, Karima. Yes. You have You're a welcome. sister in me. Now. <laughs> same, you have a in same. Me. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Where is the buzz? Oh, yeah. Where is the buzz? You said it was mine.